Hello. How on earth did you get up there? Oh, you must be watching my channel. Anyway, it's me, Triple Valve 62, uh, in the flesh, so to speak, virtually. Um, I just wanted to do a little camera appearance. I don't do them normally go in front of my camera, but um, I just wanted to wish everybody out there a wonderful and extremely healthy 2019. And thank you to everyone who subscribes to my channel. Uh, really enjoyed your subscriptions this year, and I hope you'll continue to subscribe in the new year. And I've been checking out what you've been doing this year as well. I've been really impressed by your channel as well. And likewise, just thank you so much for all your support and subscriptions this 2018. You've really made it an amazing community on YouTube. Certainly, I think, for Model Railways in general. And certainly by subscribing to my channel. Uh, I never thought I'd get to over a thousand subs, and that's amazing. So thank you so much to everyone who subscribed to my channel. And I want to wish you, from my house to yours, um, a very... Uh, what's left of Christmas, it's already gone. Um, but I hope you had a wonderful Christmas with your family and friends. Whatever you were doing, um, I hope you had a nice time. And I hope you have an even better New Year uh, next year in 2019. Let's make it 2019 a really amazing year for our community here on YouTube. Anyway, uh, without further ado, I wanted to introduce the video I'm going to do today. This is the last video of 2018, so I thought I'd do it rather special with uh, a little intro here um, and I wanted to just say thank you for your support and I hope that you enjoy the video today and today's review is going to be a Hornby Railroad Range um, haul and I'm sure you've seen this about on YouTube over the past couple of weeks I know there's been a couple of people out there that have done it but this is my review and everyone has a different way of doing things that's why we do the YouTube channel so I wanted to just say thank you again for viewing the video today have a wonderful wonderful New Year's and hopefully, all being well, I'll be back with you in the new year for some more great videos. But I want just to share this one with you today to show you uh, what I got over Christmas. But also to say um, personally thank you. Um, that means more to me than anything else, just to have your support on the channel. I'm glad you've been enjoying the, the model railway stuff as well as the underground related stuff. Anyway, um, if you have any suggestions or ideas for the channel in the new year in terms of running videos or how-tos, uh, give me a little message in the comments box below and I'll try and do it for you. Anyway, um, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to you all. God bless you. Be safe, whatever you're doing. And uh, let's make 2019 truly an amazing year for our community. Anyway, I'll see you soon and take care. Okay, welcome back to the video and let's get down to the main review. So this is the Hornby Railroad Range Catalogue number R3170, Great Western Railway Class uh, 4900, Adderley Hall, and the running number is 4901. <coughs> so I got one of these for Christmas, and <coughs> I think it's that way around the camera. Yeah, it is. Um, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Shit. Okay, so let's get on with the review. So. I want to show you what I got for Christmas. It's a Great Western Railway haul by Hornby. It's the railroad range, and it is catalogue number R3170, and it's a Great Western Class 4900, which is Adderley Hall, and its running number is 4901. So I'm going to get this out of the box and show you. First of all, show you the package and it comes in, it's a Hornby Railroad range, De dead giveaway by the striped box, you recognise these these days, and obviously it's got railroad slapped on the side of the corner. And pretty bog standard box, I don't do bog re box reviews on my channel, so I need to see a bog review there. <laughs> Arrow! Okay guys and girls, hope you're sitting back with something nice to drink and a little munch, and I hope you enjoyed the video today. And like I said, with my channel, just like everyone else is out there on YouTube, I just do a personal review of something or a product that I do it in my way. And if you find my way better than someone else's and you like it, give it a thumbs up. And if you like some, if, if you don't like mine but like someone else's, then that's up to you. That's what we're all about here. There's no nitpickiness here, at least for, at least on my channel, I don't think. Anyway, it's a Hornby Railroad range product I'm going to review today, and it's a Great Western Railway Hall class, which is typically. 4900 or 4900, you like to pronounce that, and it's Adderley Hall, and its running number is 4901, catalogue number R3170. So we're going to be looking at that today, so let's bring it into the camera shot. So here it is. It's obviously a railroad railroad range model, as I've just discussed, because you can tell by the packaging, the distinct stripe down the side of the box and the, 
the logo that says Railroad Range in the top corner, a bit of a giveaway. Um, she is DCC ready, so if you want to DCC this particular model, you can, which is great. And if, like me, you're old fashioned DC, then even better. Anyway, I'm going to get this out of the packaging and we're going to show you exactly what's inside. Okay, so here we are. We took the outer sleeve off and we've just got the packaging tray. When you open it up, it comes with a plastic protective insert over the top and you've got this plasticky material that protects it inside. It's pretty well packaged, obviously, it's designed not to be shook about in transit, but um, don't sort of throw it on the floor or drop it if you can help it because it obviously it's protected, but it's not guaranteed something will break off. There isn't much to break off on these models because they're railroad range models because they're designed for uh, non fiddly bits to come off. But there is a certain amount of detail on here that if you're not careful with it and you're a bit silly, they you know, can bend or snap or break. So we're going to be very careful and take this out of the box. Now, when you take a look out of a box in general, be it railroad range, from Hornby, a top end model or Backman, any model railway loco you're not on the market these days, generally word of mouth has on the back of the tray, certainly Hornby, has <clears throat> these two punch holes and they're there for a reason, they're there for your fingers and the idea is, just put it at an angle, I generally um, put my hand over it like that, turn it upside down and then from the back end I'm just going to push it through gently with my fingers so it drops gently into my hand without anything getting broken. So there we go. We'll take that out of the way. And then we'll just put that on the table very, very carefully. Like this. And there it is. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to stop the video. And I'm going to bring this down at eye level so we can get a much better look at this. And I can go through a few things with you, which I'm, I'm sure you'll be interested to see. And I'll be back shortly. Okay everyone, welcome back. So here we go on the ground with a look at this beautiful Great Western Hall from Hornby Railroad Range. And as you can see straight off the bat, these are extremely handsome machines. And with all the Great Western locos, right the way through the range from the, the Collets and the Dean Goods, right the way up through the Super Locos, like the Kings and the Halls, the Manors, and that sort of thing, and the Castles, all the Great Western locos in general were very handsome looking engines, right the way back to the city of Truro. So, I mean, all these locos have a very elegant, very handsome look about them. Got nice lines. And we'll start off on our sample today by looking at the front of the loco to start with. So, if we move down to the smoke box end, you can see on your device at home that it's got this lovely amount of rivet detail here. And I think the light picks it up quite well. You've got all the, this detail running all the way along from the running plate all the way up to the front end. You've got some nice rivet detail around the smoke box area here. That's a nice pipe work detail here. And if we look at the chimney, the, the really typical Great Western copper finished chimneys they used to have on all the, the low coast, um, it's got this nice raised lip on top of the chimney, which is correct for a hall. The, ch the chimney profile in general and casting is very well done. And on some low coast, and I've got one or two Batman low coast, when you look at it from the top end, like this, you notice a very fine seam where the body's been put together in the factory. You haven't got this on here, it's all done in one nice mould and it's lovely. Um, that's quite nice. But moving on detail wise, let's go to the front end. So, as you can see, um, the buffer beam colour is, is nice, crisp um, buffer beam red as it should be. Sometimes they look a little bit off red, but um, Hornby have got this colour right spot on, I think. And you've got the running number on the front there, 4901. The vacuum pipe, which was already fitted on my sample. The only thing on the front here, you've got no NEM pocket coupling. My, mine didn't come with a coupling. Now there is space, um, if I just move this, well I'm not going to move it really too much, but underneath here, you know, in this area here, you might be able to make out that little square, square block in that area. Underneath there, there is a square socket for a NEM pocket pocket coupling. So you can actually fit that on there. I've tried that earlier on on my sample here and it does actually fit nicely. So you can put a front coupling on there but this one comes without a coupling. Should you wish to run it tender first, um, you can quite easily put a coupling on there. That's the main aim of the game I was trying to tell you, that you can put a coupling on there. So looking at the detail and as we move down towards the cab end, we take a little tour. And again it's got some nice detail here. I mean. 
little things like this here. The handrails are separately fitted. You've got a moulded, um, bring it up on top you can see, There's you've got a moulded piece of pipe in here running all the way along the boiler but outside of that you've got a separately fitted wire handrail and again even though it's only a railroad range model please treat it with respect and care in other words don't grab it like that because what you'll do you'll bend these out of shape and you'll possibly pop them out of the sockets always handle your locos like that from the running plate much more easy to grip less chance of breaking or bending things like pipe work off um, what else on the other top there you've got the brass coloured safety valve which is nice that's nicely picked out again it's crisp paintwork wise these boiler bands are nice and uh, crisply applied there I can't fault those uh, it's only if you get a magnifying glass you might notice a little tiny bit off but to the eye even close up it's, it's nice and crisp as you can see hopefully at home on your device and obviously you've got the nice um, Adderley Hall name plate above the wheel splasher there which is nice the reversing rod which is here that's nice a little bit of pipe work detail here separately fitted whistle or whistles because on the Great Western locos you had two tone whistles believe it or not and that's nicely fitted up there the cab itself is, is quite nice uh, in terms of its typical Great Western Railway um, the, the curved type roof on there, the cab roof design, typical Great Western, all the castles and manors and kings had that Great Western profile on their cab, very nicely done there. Again there's some rivet detail on top. If we look at the cab windows from this angle, I'll pull it around in a minute so we can look at the back so bear with me, but from this angle we can see the driver's view windows here, they're glazed on both sides and the cab window there is fully glazed on both sides, so that's nice. Um, it does make a difference, I think, on any steam locomotive to have glazed cab windows. And there's quite a few locos out there in the previous railroad range that doesn't have glazed windows. For example, um, the LMS um, Black 5. That was released by a railroad range, I think, a couple of years ago. That never came with glazing, and it wouldn't have hurt to put some glazing in there. But as you can see on this model, it makes a heck of a difference. So that looks really nice. <clears throat> Looking at these wheels... Nice solid wheels here, nice spoked wheels. These are nice, and these actually are very reminiscent of the early Hornby tender drive locos. Um, that's what it reminds me of. But it's really, really nice. These um, this detail here. Sorry, my my memory's going. I haven't been drinking. I swear. Um, these drive rods and these connecting rods here. That's what I was trying to tell you. <laughs> It's only early in the morning. Um, these are quite nicely done, as you can see. They're quite nicely machined there. You've even got that little bit there. In real life, that's where the um, cork would have gone in there. The type you get in a wine bottle, but much, 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 much larger, would have gone in there. And that would have put your steam oil and lubrication oil in there, more so your oil for your lubrication of your dry rod mechanism. So that's your, one of your little fine details on there, which is quite nice. So yeah, it's, it's generally a very nicely detailed model. Let's move down to the tender end, and we can see what's going on down here. So this is a very nice tender that comes with this and it's the typical tender that came with the hall class so it's correctly modelled I have researched photos of this online and in books I've got and it is absolutely correct spot on in terms of details right down to the leaf springs here and the, the old bearers there everything on this is very very good again you've got some nice rivet detail on the tender there if I catch that in the light you'll be able to see that all this rivet detail around here the Great Western um, lettering on there is nicely applied in the, in the nice prefix for the Western region that was used. This particular livery, by the way, folks, was roughly about the 1920s. Um, the later versions had different variations of the Great Western logos and liveries on there, right up to BR days when it was transferred over to British Railways and Western region. 
but I mean that's quite nice on there. Looking at the tender from behind, from this angle, I'm just going to carefully move this around here. Hang on, excuse his fingers. If we move it around here, you can see at the back there, that's quite nice. Again, you've got some lampine brackets there, so you can put your little rear lamps on there if you wish to. Again, it comes with a vacuum pipe, and there is a little hook on there, should you wish to put a hook and chain mechanism on there for your coupling system. Again, these buffers aren't, buffers aren't sprung, um, but they're quite nicely detailed there, as you can see comes with a rear NEM pocket coupling so obviously you can couple whatever you want to that. Looking on top as an overview of the top of the tender this is quite nice actually because we've got all this detail on top with the water filler there. The coal um, is actually quite believable and it doesn't come out, it's not removable, it's moulded unlike the other locos you get from Hornby where you can remove the coal and the Backman models this one unfortunately you can't, at least I don't think you can, I'm not going to attempt it, but I personally leave that as it is, that's quite nice Then you've got a slot down the side there to put your fire irons and bits and pieces there looking at the foot plate this is something a little bit different on my model but I'm just going to show you what can be achieved if you want to go a little bit further with this model Bear with me while I just turn it round. I'll bring the light in so I can backlight this a little bit. Hang on. A little bit of shunting on the tabletop. <laughs> right. Now then. <coughs> With this particular model, I'll bring this in so we, you can see what I'm talking about. Now, on my model sample that I've got on the table, I've actually hand-painted the regulator, firebox door lever, and on the driver's side, because there are right-handers on the Great Western, um, the reversing cut-off lever, you might not be able to see it actually, it's too, too far in there, but anyway, when you get your sample, your version of this, it'll all be black in the cab, but what I'm trying to explain is at home, is this it's five minutes literally I took with a paintbrush, and just put some detail in there, and I painted some of those gauges up there with a the silver coloured paint just to give a little bit of relief to the eye you don't have to go too mad in there because you want to pick out a few things but by just picking out for example the regulator in red and the handle in silver painting a few of the gauges in there silver as you can see from that shot there and by adding a foot plate crew here he is old Ted swinging away there with his shovel <laughs> um, it's amazing you can bring this to life a very simple model Let's just bring this around here. Right, pair with me. Right, that's better. Now, apologies for the <coughs> shakiness there. Right, so what I was going to talk to you about is what is going on underneath this loco and what you need to know and what you should not interfere with. Right, so first of all, if I very carefully roll this over like this on its side, we'll have a look underneath and you can see what's going on in terms of what does what underneath. Now, when you get your sample, it does not come with brake rods, even though there are holes for it. And as you can see on my sample, I've sourced some brake rods that I had from an, uh, an old castle model. Then I've put mine in position, as you can see, underneath there in the two slots. You don't need to uh, use super glue to hold them in place because the actual pressure of the brake rods on either side and the way that the plasticky brake rods are all fitted up in there underneath will hold it in place by itself. You don't need to use any adhesives. You can if you want to, but I don't on mine, just in case I need to remove those for some maintenance purposes later on. But certainly, um, these brake rod uh, rigging little pieces that are underneath here, they do fit in the slots. And when you get your sample, you'll notice there's holes for that. If we look at the tender, hang on a second, that's a bit better isn't it, that's better, right, if we look at the tender you can see, if I carefully, very carefully move this along, you can see possibly, yeah there we are, you've got one there and one there, There's, they're very fine little drilled holes through those 
brake rods um, there. So you basically put your brake rig in through those holes on each of the pins that go along the tender. Again, that it doesn't come unfortunately with these, so you've got to source these yourself. Or uh, my suggestion would be to go somewhere like Peter Spares, which is a very very well used and known shop online on eBay. Go to Peter Spares. I'm sure you'll have someone there for you. If not, you could go to your local model shop and whatnot and source those. They're pretty cheap. Um, one of the main things to look at on this loco and to be aware of uh, that it's permanently fixed together. I say permanently fixed, it's not really permanently fixed because you can undo it with these screws here. Um, but there's two screws, one, two. If you want to separate the loco from the tender because you want to fit something like DCC into the tender, um, all you do, there's a plug, there's a nice little plug that very, very carefully you can just gently pull out that socket and then obviously undo the screw here, it releases the drawbar and you can take the tender away. Um, I actually undid mine for the purposes of fitting my, my crew on there over Christmas because it was a little bit fiddly with that in the way. So that's what you can do if you wish to undo it. Other than that, leave it be. Don't um, touch it if you don't have to. Um, one of the cool little things underneath here on the chassis where I've got it underneath it on its side is if we look at, for example, the <clears throat> prototypical water scoop, which is here. And obviously on the western region, you had water troughs along the route so that it could pick up gallons and gallons of water whilst on the move as opposed to being stationary and on my layout I've actually got water troughs fitted obviously not real ones but um, it's pretty good how they modelled that on the, the model here that's interesting to see that it's a nice little addition and these lovely little spoked wheels on the tender which I love um, lubrication wise while we've got this on its side again I'll go through lubrication because they will talk about this when you open your model you will get a sheet of standard gump from Hornby which looks a bit like that. And in here it's got all the information. I'm not going to bore you and open this up, but you'll get this inside. And when you open it up, it shows you where to fit your DCC chip and your, most importantly, your lubrication. Now, to a lot of you new modelers out there that are new to the hobby or just got back into it, one of the two most important things in a model railway is to keep your track clean and your wheels clean, but also lubrication. If you lubricate your loco, um, you shouldn't have to touch it for at least um, all... A good eight months at least that's how I reckon it uh, with normal usage and basically I would put a drop of oil uh, there right on that pin and especially where you've got the, the cranks and the spaces there and certainly I'd put a bit on there but a tiny bit on this on the slide bar there not too much tiny drop I stress the word drop on there and inside looking at that I'd also put a little dab of oil inside the axle, right on the axle itself inside. Drop the oil down into there and do the same for there, for there, for there, there and there. And also as mentioned on the outside, anywhere where you've got moving parts on the wheels and the linkage and drive rods, a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of oil. I can't stress the word tiny. If you can see loads of oil, it means you've put too much on there and you've got to get it off because it can do quite a lot of damage and it can pick up a lot of crap as well. So just put your oil on there very sparingly and you can use a pin or a cocktail stick um, I use a specialist oil in pen, a pen from Gage Master and that's how I do my lubrication but when you get your model make sure firstly that you put your oil on there lube it up because obviously you don't know how long it's been sitting in the factory or how long it's been sitting on the shelf somewhere so always make sure you add a little tiny drop of oil if you can see oil on the model then I wouldn't worry because it's been lubed up in the factory and it's working, so I wouldn't touch that too much. But if it looks a bit dry, rule of thumb, give it a little bit of oil. Also, don't forget to put some oil um, on the tender in these areas here, on the axles, because they can sometimes dry out. And also going down to the front of the loco, put a little bit either side on the axles there underneath. Also, um, where you've got this movable plate here that slides back and forth and navigate, navigate point working curves, Put a little bit on there as well. And believe it or not, put a very, very fine, fine amount on the drawbar, either side of the screw. So it keeps everything moving nicely. Again, where you've got moving parts, just give her a little move to and fro help with some oil. Anyway, um, that's pretty much about it for the loco itself. Um, performance wise I will do a running video of this to match up with the commentary and 
general overview of the loco. But out of out of the out of ten, um, I'd probably give this ten out of ten. Actually, to be fair, ten out of ten because it is a very very nice loco. Um, in terms of operation, I had a little bit of problem with this. Now, I will confess that I had some problems with this when I first run it. It ran, but it was a little bit hesitant in terms of uh, moving. Moving, I put a little bit of power onto it. It started to move. It was a little bit jerky. So what I did, I actually took off underneath here, and I'll show you this little trick you can do. You don't have to do it. But if I roll it very carefully back on its side, sorry, darling. Um, you'll see here in my camera shot, there's four screws. One, two, three, four. If you carefully undo those screws, it releases this plastic plate. There's nothing attached to it apart from two copper pickups that correspond to the pickups on the actual plate. Take that off and you'll see the bare metal um, axle chassis and it will, it will expose the axles themselves and you should see some grease on them. But sometimes what happens is the, the grease tends to dry out in the factory and is not enough. So to add to the, the running of the axles, I added a tiny bit of oil directly on the axle itself all the way across on each of the three axles there. So basically oil, oil, oil underneath there in the actual um, chassis itself and then put the whole thing back together and I found it was much much smoother so little things like that you can overcome, little tricks so if your loco is a little bit jerky in performance and you've got clean track, you've got good power connection and the pickups and wipers on the wheels are nice and clean but you're still getting a little bit of hesitant there remember two things, it could be because the brand new motor has been fitted obviously in the factory it's brand new these running in and secondly it could be there's no lubrication on the axles themselves so that could be a problem that you can overcome simply with doing what I've just said. A little bit, a tiny bit of oil on the axles. Um, the other thing as well, importantly to remember with this engine, like anything you buy from Hornby, be it a diesel loco, a shunter, a little 040, or a massive 8F or 9F or whatever it is you've bought, any model railway loco, golden rule of thumb is, as soon as you get it, and you, you've checked everything is okay on it, and you put it on the track, let it run in for 25 minutes at least in both directions 25 minutes forward 25 minutes reverse what it does is you will see this in the instruction manual from hornby but just to tell you out there as well why it's important it's because you've got brand new gears and the whole thing is brand new including the motor so the whole thing like a car needs running in and if you don't run it in um, it won't bed in nicely and it won't work nicely, you won't get a smooth operating loco, it'll be quite, um, quite tight. Um, like the real things in real life, um, a steam locomotive straight out of Swindon works. Um, six months into the main line, you had a perfectly working fine engine. And it worked really well because it's six months, it was six months old, still very new, but also it had run in, all the parts had worn in nicely. So the same in model form, you need to run in your locos when you get them out of the box, 25 minutes each way. And then you should have something very, very reliable operating on your layout. Now, speed-wise, I always say a very medium to low speed. Don't run it around at warp speed, because that's just silly. What you need to do is a nice medium speed, have it as light engine, don't have nothing hooked up to it, let it just run under its normal power as a light engine on its own, and you will find that will be much um, greatly appreciated uh, in terms of running. So there we are. That's enough waffling from me. I hope you've enjoyed the review. And if you're thinking about getting one of these, um, <coughs> buy, a <fa> <coughs> buy a Father Christmas. <coughs> I got mine for Christmas. Um, my other half said to me, you know, do you want an engine for Christmas? And I said, well, yes, I do. Of course, obviously, it'd be nice, but I'm not sure which to pick because some engines I don't want on my layout because they're too modern or they, don't, they won't fit. Now you may ask a, a, a man who is absolutely fanatical and die-hard Eastern region, why on earth did I get a haul? Because number one, I like the look of it and I haven't got a haul in my collection. And secondly, um, it, was, it wasn't uncommon for locos of different regions to find themselves in strange territories because of engineering works or diversions or for trial runs so <coughs> even though the <coughs> excuse me the hall wasn't on the great eastern in reality 
Um, I've got some nice 1920s Great Western coaches that I had from 1996. I've never used them really. So <laughs> an excuse to put that behind uh, the coaches. Anyway, the other reason I got it was because it was on a really, really good deal from Hattons. And before I close the video, it, it was an absolutely amazing steal. It was 90 odd pounds and it was cut down, I think, to £49.99 on Hattons. So they're still on there. If you want to have a look, grab, grab yourself a bargain. And that is my lovely Great Western Railway Adderley Hall. Hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have enjoyed all my videos this year with you. And God bless you and your families for the new year. And I'll see you in 2019. Take care. Bye-bye.